So with footies right around the corner, I thought we'd go over the top three players before they get obliterated. Normally with footies, we get the high end, the absolute end of end games, and I'm hoping they do it again. By the things, by the looks of Euros, by the looks of team of the season, they're really ramping up now. It's going to be very interesting to see who tops all of these cards, and it will be really interesting to see like two, three weeks, I'd say, is enough to see how different this list change. We're going to run through it. Keepers first. To be honest, I think you could go with pretty much any of the top end. Martinez, Casillas, uh, Oblak, Tostegan, Van der Sar, Czech team of the year. I think all of them could still give you a stin. I've gone against pretty much a different keeper every single time. My list for these is Casillas in number three. It's Martinez in number two and Schmeichel in number one. Now with Schmeichel, it might be more of a bit recency bias in terms of him being my keeper now. He's the highest rated, uh, well, technically now not the highest rated, in fact. He's got Jordan Pickford, but I think Pickford would come in four or five for me, depending on Van der Sar. I feel like where I'd kind of fancy Van der Sar would be Pickford underneath him. But I do think all keepers now are absolutely at the top end. Casillas managed to get himself the 99 reflex. I would be very interested to have seen the 99 at uh, speed for him. That would have just been an interesting one because you see high rated speeds, but then you also see low rated. So it really can't be that much of a contributing factor to it. But the main one for me is height. As you can see, other than Casillas, which I think does very well for a six foot one keeper, most of them are at least a six three, six four and above. We see the likes of Edison Allison normally at the start of the game. You throw in a cheeky Donnarumma, who I believe is about six six in the game. So I, I think you could go with anybody. So that for me is kind of just a gray area for keepers. If you're looking for coins to improve your team, head over to lootbar.gg for the most reliable and also the best coins around. Also, they have incredible 24 hour manual customer service that you physically cannot find anywhere else. But before finishing on lootbar.gg, make sure you are using JT11 to get 8% off coupon. Once you've gone through the payment, you'll be able to get your coins within the next 24 hours absolutely guaranteed. Also with the code, you'll be able to get 5% more coins on every transaction. Make sure you do click the link either in the description or down in the comment section below. Now, when you do go into the other positions, there's always going to be arguments, SBCs that people have done, evolutions that people have done, and just generically how you play the game. Do you play a free back, a five back? Do you go a solid 4-4-2? Do you like wing backs? Do you like stay backs? Do you like false nines, strikers, hold up, uh, go in between the lines? There's so many different that will make a massive factor on your list. So I personally gone with Carfu first. I've always thought he as a right back has been integral to the top of that field. The full backs in, in the right back specifically Carfu has to be there. Now we have got some incredible names and more than likely at some point during footies we'll do like a top 10 and we'll see where we're at there because you're going to see a bit more of a list. These are more of the top end but you'll see some very interesting picks as we go through. I think Carfu's an easy one. We've then got Carl Walker as the second right back and finishing off for Frimpong. Now, Frimpong for me needs the upgrade now. I want the quadruple for him. I want the stats upgraded. And I think he's going to be absolutely up there with an all-time right back in the entirety of FC, of FIFA combined. He's genuinely a breath of fresh air when it comes to a right back. I love the rapid, the whipped pass, the jockey. The stats on him are incredible. And I, I must admit, people could argue that Walker's better now. But I think Frimpong, for what he offers, is just outstanding. He's, he's been a favorite from the get-go. Walker is incredible, but sometimes I just feel like he's very one-dimensional and going forward. And as much as stat-wise, he's up there. This is this is the argument. You look at the stats across the board, there is very little change there. Everybody's got the 95 plus pace. Everybody's got decent shooting. Passing's up there. Dribbling's up there. Defending's up there. And then it's the argument of physicality. So it's not even based on stats nowadays because everybody is in the 90s. We can't really kind of differentiate between a stat. They've got what they wanted. It is totally down 
to play star pluses. That, that's the biggest factor that you can go with. And then skill move weak foot as we progress into the into the kind of forward aspects. Center mids with a five weak foot is going to be very much a need rather than a want. So that is going to be a huge part of it. When we look at the fullbacks now, we've got four uh, five fours and then Walker with a five five due to the semi-final upgrade. But I think that would be my list. Commiserations to Alfonso Davies as a big... No, in fact, he's a left back. <laughs> it's Klaus. Klaus on this side. We move into the left back, so that's why I was kind of going into it. We've got Teo Hernandez as his 98. We have got Cap de Villa with his 97. And my personal favorite is got to be Furlan Mendy. Commiserations to Alfonso Davies. That's the right place to say it. I just think for me, Furlan Mendy is number one. With Teo Hernandez, he has definitely got everything you need. Like we said, stats-wise, I, I don't really need to touch on them too much. It is predominantly based around the playstyle pluses. We've got a 4-5, a 4-4, and a 5-4. So we've got pretty much everything we need there. And obviously, when it comes to Furlan Mendy, we've got the long ball pass, the jockey, the quick step, and the relentless. We've Cap Devia, the whipped pass, the jockey, the quick step, the relentless. So it is long ball for whipped pass. That would be the only thing that I'd consider going Cap Devia first. Now, the big thing for Teo, whipped pass, rapid, relentless, and a long ball throw. It, it just couldn't have been jockey, could it? And I understand this is their way of upgrading him to a 99 footers when they eventually do. And giving him jockey and anticipate rather than long ball throw and relentless. You could see it a mile off. They knew that with these play style pluses, they're going to be the factor that says... Oh, can we upgrade him again? And more than likely, we see a 99 Teo be one of the first 99 left backs we've actually ever seen. And I think the card is outstanding. But the playstyle plus of a long ball throw is unfortunately going to top him off for me. He's got the stats to go with it, but so does everybody else. So it's not necessarily a big thing there. And especially in fullbacks, there's not much to it. You've got the work rates. Everybody's got pretty much the same. He's six foot. So is Captain Villa. 5'11 for Mendy. So I think it goes down to personal preference as a, a fullback option. So my number one's Mendy and also our lovely man Frimpong. We then move into some center backs. Now, this is quite an easy one. I don't know if there is even an argument, to be honest. When it comes to the top center backs, there's, there's definitely an argument between like five and ten. But I think the top three are pretty solidified. Militao's 97. Absolutely love him. Saliba, 98. Incredible. And obviously Virgil, 99. I mean, I think that list for me, that is the easiest three that I could go with. The only argument that I could see is Militao not being free and maybe going like Arejo or the new Rudiger potentially. I could see your arguments there. I think that's absolutely valid. But when we've got the Anticipate, the Aerial Plus and the Jockey, Anticipate, Slide Tackle, Jockey, Aerial, Anticipate, Block, Slide Tackle, and they threw the long ball pass in. I reckon that's going to be so they can make a 99 footies just to add something different. They'll add an intercept in it or a jockey. So it's a quadruple defensive play style plus. That, that's the only thing I could think there. But I, I do think these three center backs are my absolute favorite. Vidic has got to be in the list at some point. Um, Arejo, like I said, as an SBC was outstanding for how well he truly did. Then you're looking at the likes of Kunate. You're looking at Rudiger. They are all absolutely in the top end and I don't think there's much to it I think Virgil is the easiest number one you can physically put in but then I'd say yes you could argue a, a Ruben Diaz at some point in that top end but I think Saliba takes my second spot with no question and then yeah I think third goes to what your preference is but I've always loved Militao now into the midfield, I've split it up into CDMs, center mids, and cams. We'll run through all of them, starting off with the new Rodri. Now, in terms of a CDM box-to-box -box and a cam, I always get these questions of where's such and such, where's such and such. And normally, if I'm doing like a cam, they'll ask for like a box-to-box. -box, and I'm like, a CDM is predominantly more defensive. So if we ran through the list, I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. Because the hardest bit is the stats are now absolutely up there. So like Rodri is very clearly a solid DM. He's got the defensive and physical game. Shooting-wise is not as much there. That's understandable. But when we look at someone like a Cam and Vinger, who's my number two, 
to be fair, the stats are very much box to box esque. But I think in terms of defensive, it's it's the easier option to go for. If I was going him versus a Bellingham versus a Matthias versus a Hullet, they are all so many different kind of midfielders. Whereas I think with Cam and Vinger, he rocks that DM role so much better. And the obvious number one for me. It's an upgrade that is just absolutely mental. Vieira in that DM role is just light years above everybody. He's tall. He's got that stats. The play style pluses are there. And I think in-game, just overall ability really takes over for him. He's a 4-5. We've got a 4-4 four -four for Cam and Vinga and a 4-5 for Rodri. Now, with Rodri, very cheap in comparison to the rest. Obviously, it ramps up very quickly from Kamenvinger to Vieira. But I think all three of them are absolutely up there. We've got a few other cards at the end for uh, kind of cards that you could put in there as well. So stay tuned for all of that. But I think when it comes to a DM, they are more defensive than anything. That That is the role of a defensive mid is to basically be... A midfielder that is almost like a centre-back. You want to have that person that is in front of the defenders and he's absolutely solid with it. A box-to-box -box in my aspect is good at both. He can defend, he can attack, and he's great on the ball at pushing it forward. Passing's a must, dribbling is now a must in terms of the cards being upgraded, and then a cam is predominantly attacking. He could have 98 shooting, but only 80 defending. That is what a cam is all about. I don't need him to come back. I've got a defensive mid holding the position. I've got a box-to-box -box leading the line and being the more defensive type, and maybe my uh, kind of tactics is to be more just cutthroat in the attack rather than necessarily worrying about the defense because to be fair now the 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 level of the defense as we saw is absolutely skyrocketed you can kind of get away with only using the defense and maybe a box to box and a cam so as we go into the center mids i mean they're no short of talent we have got de paul at 99 we have got enzo fernandez 99 and finishing it off with a hullet hullet will always be one of my personal favorites as a center mid He's just perfect at it. With the Enzo de Paul, again, there's loads of arguments through different players. These are my personal favorites. With, obviously, Enzo, it's a bit harder because, obviously, he's an objective card that was not necessarily guaranteed for everybody. Now, luckily, I've got other accounts that, that have managed to do him, so that is perfect to be able to play with him there. The main account, unfortunately, missed out on him. I didn't really fancy it, and I think I was away that specific weekend as well, and not, not as if I was even going to try it anyway, but he has had the craziest upgrades. To be fair, I think when it comes to a box-to-box, -box, all of them are on that level. Like, literally, the stats barely move. They're all 90 and above. All of them have got the 5-5, five five, which is perfect. Playstyle plus-wise, we're looking at dead ball, incisive, technical, relentless. Anticipate, press proven, relentless, and pinged pass. And finesse, power header, anticipate, and pinged pass. Now, obviously, with the other two, with DePaul and also Fernandez, they've got very much defensive slash passing. The one thing I think they did really well with Hullet... You've got the shooting, you've got the defensive, a passing, and a bit of aerial work. I think it's absolutely perfect. They got that card so right to be so expensive and be an absolute must for everybody. So, Hullet will always be number one. I think the only person who takes Hullet out of this top spot is another Hullet, in, in my opinion. And let me know your favorites down below. That's what I kind of want you to do. Don't go and attack every single option because everybody can be different. What is your free center mids? What is your free center backs? Have you got a different list to me? Let me know. And Cam's Actually, Xavi Simons loved him, thought he was a brilliant cam. On the ball, him and also Goulet are incredible at pushing the ball forward with dribbling. Rapid plus with the Traveller and Technical. We've then got a Danny Olmo, very similar vibe, love the 99 dribbling on him. He's just effortless. Gliding through, doesn't quite have the Rapid plus, the Technical's there, the Pinged Pass is there. He's obviously got the Incisive as well, and also a cheeky Traveller. Now, he is a 5-5 five -five in comparison to Xavi Simons, but my number one will obviously go to Bellingham here. Now, Bellingham is an argument that, to be fair, I'm probably not great at keeping because I think Bellingham is incredible across the board. As a box-to-box, -box, as a cam, whatever you want him to do, he can do it. Very much like Hullet, but I do like Bellingham just on the pitch. In general, having the ball to his feet, he's incredible. His strength is there. He's got a little bit of a tackle as well, which is really nice because obviously... 
it's good to have a cam that is very attacking focused but now we're in the end game it is almost like how the new game of or well, the new uh, style of football in general where center backs now need to be good with their feet goalkeepers have to play out the back you go 10 years ago goalkeepers are oofing it up you've got potentially maybe a good center back passing to the fullbacks and getting it up the pitch or just giving it a big oof that is kind of now how we're at fifa when we get to the end game everybody's got to be good at everything strikers are going to have 80 plus defending they're going to have 90 plus passing you need a, a kind of player that's got everything and as you can see to be honest other than maybe a couple of these cams like we see Danny Elmo with not necessarily the greatest defending whereas Xavi Simons he's not a box to box but he's got 84 defending on him Bellingham is just an incredible center mid cam whatever you want to play him and I personally think he is absolutely up there with the best of them now we move into some of the vital positions, wingers and strikers. So Diaz for me, again, like um, Rodri, like, uh, what's he called, Arejo, a great SBC if you did him. He went really far, all the way to the final, unfortunately didn't manage to get the full thing, but a 5-5, five, five, four play style pluses, a lovely upgrade across the board. He is one of the better SBCs as a winger that you could have done for like, I think about Four, five hundred. I want to say finesse, rapid, chip shot, press proven. It's a perfect winger. Now there is better, obviously. Otherwise, it'd be in the number one spot. But I do think, as an SBC goes, one of the best you truly could have got. We've obviously got the new Vinny in here as well. Again, one of my favorites. I think the upgrade is perfect for him. Added a bit more shot power to him. Pace is up there. Dribbling's up there. He's got himself the technical, the quick step, the Traveller, and a cheeky finesse shot as well. And personal preference for me. Brazilian wingers have always been better. It, it's just how I personally like the game. He is very much like the top spot in Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho will always be top. I don't think anybody could beat him other than a 99 Neymar. It is another Brazilian would get into that list. There is very close options. Garnacho was a very good option. You've obviously got Diaz as well. Rafael Liao, very good option in himself. But for me, I think it's Ronaldinho, Neymar, Vinny, Diaz, Rivaldo. And you'd just keep going down that sort of list and it'd be absolutely star-studded the only thing for Ronaldinho which again could lead him into a 99 would be not having that 5-5 I don't know why he hasn't got it I, I just it makes no sense so for me that would be an opening that they go for here's a 99 a 5-5 different play style pluses we've got rid of the dead ball and added a rapid plus we've added a power shot and aerial plus randomly that's where I can kind of see the footies icons and heroes going depending on how many they are truly wanting to put in over on the right wing side, we keep on the theme with the Brazilians, but we do end up with some very good right wings. I think Rafinha, for me, great upgrade for him. Now, I haven't used like Alwaran or Gar um, Garincha because they are not available yet. It'd be like me going, oh, Haaland's going to be one of the best strikers. How do you know? You can take a hint and you can take a guess. The stats are there. The play style plus is there. The, the skill move weak foot is there, but you've not actually tried them in the game. Ravin Rafinha is outstanding it's a shame that they did give him a one upgrade to the 96 that we did have already from the season progress but the game's the game it makes sense Saka at a 98 I think he's absolutely wonderful he isn't quite my top and that purely comes down to personal preference only and the the number one for me had to be Dembele I love his style of dribbling it's quick it's responsive there is very little to it I, I think they are both absolutely up there and I get a lot of people would choose Saka I just have preferred Dembele from day dot both of them have got the 5-5 five five, both of them with the left foot both of them with the uh, the finesse shot. The only thing it comes down to for me in terms of play star pluses is having that rapid plus. The whipped pass is brilliant. The press proven is a nice add on what uh, Dembele could really use. But the rapid plus for me is the absolute game changer in how I personally play. I don't really use technical as much as I should. So for me, Dembele would have to be number one. And then we have strikers. Now, this is... Such a competitive one that there is so many options. My first one as another SBC has got to be Nunez. In, in just incredible. Uruguay did monst just monstrous stuff. You had to have finished this card because they already shown signs of going so far from game one. Winning like 5-1 or 5-0 I think it was on the first game. 
you just knew full well they were there for the tournament. They didn't quite get all the way. They managed to get third. But in terms of how they were performing, Nunez was getting that 98 no matter what. He managed to get the assist or goal, I think, in the very second match, I want to say. And then finished off in the fourth. He was getting to that top rating that he could physically can as he is a make your mark. And he has been incredible for it. We have then got R9. I think there's no uh, no qualms about that one. And obviously Mbappe is number one in my list. It will be very interesting to see if R9 gets the 99. I can imagine Mbappe definitely gets the 99 with the factor that he hasn't got the 99 here. If he wasn't, I think he would have got the 99 in team in the tournament and not in footage. Whereas I do think they are looking at the progression for him. He's easily the top best striker. I think you could argue a few of Mbappe's versions, even the team of the season, is probably still up there. Now that is going to be my list. A few commiserations, commiserations <laughs> to some of the players. We have got a 99 Messi. We have got the likes of a 98 Jonathan David. We've got Cruyff still in there. Martinez still in there. Pushgas as a free card, which was incredible. Nico Williams, Benton Cure, Kunate, Henri. And then we go back to Diaz. That's going to be my list. Let me know down below if there's anybody else you would put in. And I will catch you all for the next one. Peace.